Welcome back to the homestead. It is a rainy day. I'm here in the greenhouse and hopefully the rain is not too loud. Hopefully the drip in between the camera and I don't bother you <laughs> during this video. This is the only place I could really find to film today. Um, for those who don't know, we are a family of nine living in a tiny house and the generator happens to be going. So it's a bit too noisy and wet to do filming anywhere but here in the greenhouse right now. So today's video is uh, part two in a series of videos where I've been sharing some garden varieties. Last week I shared some of our favorite tried and true varieties. This week I'm going to share some of the varieties that we're going to be introducing to the garden or have already introduced um, new this year. Alright, so just like in part one, I'm going to start with fruits and vegetables and then I'll move on to herbs and finish out with flowers. Before I get started though, I did want to mention a couple things that I forgot in last week's video. Uh, fruits that we've really come to enjoy here in the homestead in our gardens. One is a gooseberry called Pixwell. It's one that's almost thornless and it's done really well for us. We are hoping to get more Pixwell gooseberries and we want to do just a whole row of them eventually. Another fruit that's been doing really well for us is called honeyberry. Uh, here in the Ozarks we have trouble with growing blueberries. Um, we don't have very acidic soil. It tends to be more alkaline and the blueberries have just been a struggle for us. So we've decided to switch over our blueberries to pots. See if we can get that acidic soil going in pots. And in the ground, we're doing something similar to the blueberry, which is called honeyberry. And they're working so much better than the blueberries for us. So the three varieties of honeyberries that have been doing the best for us are called Blue Hokkaido, Blue Mist, and Honeybee. All right, so let's get to some of the new varieties that we're excited to introduce into the garden this year. In the brassica family, we are trying a new cabbage. It's called Tierra cabbage. Um, in last week's video, I mentioned that we really like the early Jersey Wakefield. Well, the Tierra cabbage is performing um, right alongside that one, doing just as well so far. So we'll see how it goes the rest of the season, see how it matures. We're also trying two new varieties of kohlrabi, uh, Tarek and Quickstar. And likewise, they're performing just as well as our favorite variety called Conan. So we'll see how they mature. If they do really well, that's exciting because we love kohlrabi. We're also trying a couple new varieties of summer squash. One is called Delta and the other one is called Raven. Raven is like a green zucchini squash, very dark, and it's supposed to be super quick maturing. And Delta is a yellow crookneck, also supposed to be really quick maturing. So I'm hopeful that we're gonna get more summer squash this time around, having some quicker to mature varieties. Maybe they will outdo the squash bugs or get, get to maturity before the squash bugs are too bad. All right, I'm really excited to share some new lettuce varieties with y'all. I've been trying to find some tried and true lettuce varieties and it's been tough, but this year I tried some new ones that I'm really happy with. So the first one is called Lennox and it is a very dark red oak leaf style that stands up really nicely and matures really quickly and we're loving it. The next one's called Outrageous and it is a loose leaf variety that grows super fast, super big and it also stands up really nicely. And then lastly is called Yeticule and it is a green, almost like a coast or romaine style so it stands up really nice, also matures really fast. So I found with lettuce, what I really love in a lettuce here in Missouri is ones that stay upright off the ground because we get so much rain. And when the leaves are just drooping and all over the ground, they get wet, dirty, the bugs eat them, and they're just not fun to deal with. So those three varieties are gonna be keepers. We're really excited about them. And I'm looking forward to seeing how long they go into the summer. I actually already started another round of them. Uh, so that I can see if I can get them through the summer if planted in a nice shady area. All right, moving on to herbs, a couple annual herbs that we're trying this year. One's called bronze fennel, which I guess could become a perennial um, depending on the zone. It's new to me, so I'm gonna kind of be experimenting with that. And then we're trying a new basil called purple ball. It just looks so cute and so fun. I couldn't pass it up. <laughs> and so, and we, we love basil. It's a really great one to have in the garden for all different purposes. Not just for cooking with, but using for tea. And then it just adds so much beauty and life to the garden and brings in the pollinators. Um, we just love basil. A couple new perennial herbs that we're doing this year. Um, one is called French tarragon. I've never had that before, never tried it, so I'm excited to try that one. 
Uh, and then purple sage. We have had sage before and it did well here. I've never tried the purple sage. I know there's also pineapple sage and some other neat varieties out there. Uh, but this time we're going to try the purple sage and see how the family likes it. They weren't super fond of just the regular sage. Um, but I'm hoping to find some ways to use it that the family can enjoy. All right, so moving on to annual flowers. We're trying quite a few different ones, so I'm not going to share them all with you, but i um, doing a corn flower for Bachelor Button from seed that I got from Baker Creek, and it's called Classic Artistic Mix. When I grew corn flower before, it didn't do fantastic, but I didn't really put it in a great spot. So this year I put it in a better spot. The starts are coming up great. i um, really looking forward to the flowers and hoping that it performs well. Next is Orlea White Finch, a new um, annual flower that I'm trying and I'm hoping to put that in our white flower garden. Um, it's a new garden that we're just establishing um, below our big tank tower. I've always wanted to grow Celosia, but I've never really found a variety that I loved and I did finally come across one called Flamingo Pink. So I'm gonna try that one this year. I've never grown stock either and so this year we're trying a dwarf mix variety also from Baker Creek uh, and it's got just it's full of beautiful colors so I'm excited about that one. Uh, poppies. Last year I tried to grow poppies for the first time. I grew a California poppy and unfortunately Abigail loved them. She picked every single flower so none of them went to seed and I didn't get to see how well poppies would reseed here. So this year I decided to get a few different varieties and try them again. Hopefully we'll have enough of them growing that Abby can't pick them all. <laughs> and then we'll be able to see um, how well they do at self-seeding here in our Zone 6 Missouri. So unfortunately our cat did dig up a bunch of the little baby poppy starts. But we do still have a few left so hopefully it'll be enough to have a good test on poppies. So the varieties of poppies that we're doing this year are California poppy called Pink Champagne, which I tried last year, I'm doing it again this year, a mix called Fallen in Love, and Sissinghurst White, I think is how you see the other one. Um, I do believe I have a couple other varieties that I can't remember at the moment, but i um, really not sure how many of them are actually going to still be out there after what our cat did. So. <laughs> We are gonna try a new marigold this year. I've never been super fond of the bright yellow, orange, and reds of marigolds, so I've been trying to find some more pale or white marigold varieties. Last year I tried Kilimanjaro, which was beautiful, but it was this huge bush and it just took up so much room in the garden. So I found one this year called American Eskimo, which is a nice fluffy white variety, but it stays much smaller, much more manageable. So I'm excited to see how those turn out. And then I'm also trying wild violet petunias. Last year was the first year I did any petunias and it was a lot of fun. So I found a, just a beautiful violet variety, wild violet from Baker Creek, that I'm gonna actually put with the marigolds. And I think that'll be a really pretty combination. The last new annual flower that we're trying is Madam Butterfly Snapdragons. Last year Esther planted a mix that she had gotten of snapdragons in a pot. We actually kind of forgot about them and somehow they just continued to grow and we just love that little pot of snapdragons so much. They were a lot of fun. So this year we're trying just a mix of the Madam Butterfly and I'm hoping to put them several different places in the garden to add more color in the garden. All right, so moving on to perennial flowers. If you haven't noticed yet, I love flowers. I really appreciate flowers in the garden. I enjoy gardening so much more when there's flowers all over the place and I just think that they're so important in the garden. They create such a great environment for all the beneficial bugs and that helps combat all those bad bugs that we don't want. And beyond that, it's just great to be able to grow something you love and something that's beautiful and I love being able to go out with my daughters and gather up bouquets of flowers. So anyway, this year for Mother's Day and actually last year for my birthday as well, my husband and children blessed me hugely with money to be able to go online to a few different online plant stores and get a bunch of per perennial flowers and herbs and bushes. So. I'm gonna share a few of the varieties that I've gotten. I have already gotten plants from two different places that I highly recommend. They are just so beautiful. They came looking so good, so fresh. Um, New Garden Plants is one of the places. 
and Bluestone Perennials, both online stores that just fantastic, high quality. I definitely recommend them. And then we still have another order to come. It hasn't arrived yet from Spring Hill Nursery. So hopefully those are just as good and I can recommend them as well. All right, so here we go. Uh, verbena canadensis, I think is how you say it. It's a perennial verbena for our zone and it's got a really beautiful, almost magenta flowers on it. It actually came already blooming and they're in the ground. I'm just loving the color out there in the garden. Um, we found actually at Costco some different varieties that we have started and are doing really well. One is called Blazing Star Liatris. We got a bunch of those. We just kind of put them all in one bed and I've been slowly moving them out into different areas of the gardens. Also from Costco, we got some geraniums called, um, it's called Kea geranium. So I've got those going out in the garden. And then the last one that was also from Costco is uh, called Little Spire. It's a Russian sage. And I've got a couple out in the garden and one still here in the greenhouse recovering. We accidentally left it out in the cold, but it is recovering. So um, Costco's got really good quality plants too. Who knew? <laughs> All right, we also have a couple new sedums. One is called Thunderhead. Um, it's not supposed to get super tall. It's going to have a just a really bright flower head on it. Looking forward to that. And then another really short sedum called Dazzleberry. I really enjoy the color of sedum. However, they just grow like monsters here in Missouri. And unfortunately, when they get really tall and we get all the rain, they just flop over. So I'm trying to switch over to some shorter varieties, hoping that they won't flop as bad. <laughs> I was able to get a new variety of Coreopsis or tick seed. Um, it's called Polaris and it is one that I put in our white garden and I do have another variety of Coreopsis I started from seed that's done really really well. It's self seeded exactly where I wanted it so I'm really hopeful that the white ones will do the same thing in the white garden and will self seed and spread their white beauty all over the, <laughs> the white garden. We have a couple new varieties of hardy hibiscus to put out. I haven't found a spot for them yet, but um, one is called Midnight Marvel. It's got really uh, dark, almost burgundy leaves and then bright red flowers. And then the other one is called Halo White. Um, just bright, beautiful white with a little bit of red in the center. Uh, Daylilies. Love the Daylilies. So I've got two new varieties that we have already put out in the garden. One is called Purple Dioro. And the other one is kind of a more pale yellow called Fragrant Returns. It's supposed to be a reblooming daylily. So I'm excited about those. I was able to get a couple new perennial garden phlox. So one is called David. It's a pretty tall white garden phlox and it's supposed to perform pretty well in areas with humidity. The other one is called Ultraviolet and I have no idea if it's right for our climate or not but we're testing it out. It's just so bright and I think it will really stand out in the garden. And I'm almost done here. A few more white flowers for the white garden. We got some white bleeding hearts. I've always loved bleeding hearts. They're just so beautiful. Uh, we had them in Alaska and I wasn't sure if they would perform well here in Missouri, but they are doing good. And so I'm excited to add the white variety to the garden. A white balloon flower. Never tried balloon flowers, but we're giving one of those a try. And then last is a white hellebore. I've struggled with hellebore. They're so expensive and I actually only had one in the garden for the longest time and it just wasn't doing anything. Then last year, um, it seemed like it finally started to take off and so I've added a couple new varieties and it looks like they're gonna make it. I've heard that hellebore can take a while to establish but once established it does really well and that's my experience too. So hopeful that the white hellebore will eventually take off and add some white beauty to the white garden. All right, well that's it for today. Thanks for joining me on this rainy day in our quite drippy greenhouse. Hope you all are doing well. As always, thank you so much to our patrons who make these videos possible. Thank you for your kind comments 
and I would love for you to share something new that you're trying in the garden this year or maybe you've just got a balcony in the city and you're gonna plant something in a pot whatever it is if you're excited about growing something new this year please share it in the comments below and until next time we pray blessings over you and yours and whatever you do do it with your whole heart.